I'm from Norfolk. I'm from Essex. Croydon. Durham City in the North East. I use cannabis to feed my endocannabinoid system, combat depression, ADHD and anxiety. Arthritis, chronic pain. Bipolar disorder. For living life. There's a great deal of media attention in the UK at the moment about medicinal cannabis, specifically with the recent stories of Alfie Dingley and Billy Coldwell. Suffering with Crohn's disease myself, I decided to head to London to an event called Patients in Parliament at Fort Callis House, where I managed to meet up with the political director of the United Patients Alliance. He gave me his thoughts on the upcoming day's events. My hope for the outcome for today's event is that we will engage so many more MPs and politicians and get them to listen to patient stories and make sure that they're lobbying on our behalf to make sure our voices are heard at the highest levels so we can become involved in making policy in the UK. Why cannabis? All humans have an endocannabinoid system. Cannabis has all of the cannabinoids necessary to keep that in homeostasis and top us up. That is why cannabis works so well across a range of different conditions and different symptoms. And besides that, versus current pharmaceuticals that most of our patients are on, the side effects are so much less. It's safer and it's more effective and patients need it now. Billy needs his medicine, but so do all of we. We, we can thank Charlotte Coldwell for her tireless efforts in getting Billy into the media in making sure that everybody hears this story because without her we wouldn't be where we are now but we need to build on that. The job is not done yet. But what we want to do is we want to take this opportunity to teach people, to teach our medical profession, to teach our politicians um, that cannabis is not about CBD. Um, cannabis is a lot broader than that. Um, that it's not about children with epilepsy, it is, but it also goes a lot further than that and, and a lot broader. And the very best way to do that is through patient stories. After listening to so many patients in Parliament tell their stories, all I could wonder was how could cannabis help me? So I made my way down to Parliament Square, where I spoke personally to many patients about how cannabis has changed their lives for more perspective. In 2016, I was diagnosed with lung cancer and I was deemed stage four and terminal. I was given six months to live and my expiry date was the 3rd of June, 2017. And I'm still here. I was given a little innocuous pot of cannabis in coconut oil and I applied it after my first surgery and I had a tumor disappear. And it was inoperable. So that was when I, I became interested. Basically, my diagnosis was wrong or well, what I'm doing is working. And I can't see any other answer than that. We all need help, and I won't back down. We won't back down, we can't. Cannabis helps me in many ways because I suffer with degenerative disc disease in the top of the bottom of my spine. I already have one disc taken out to sort of put off quadriplegia for a while. I've more surgery on the horizon, but without cannabis, I wouldn't be able to stand there in front of you today not without walking aids or I'd be in a wheelchair. It also helps me manage the symptoms of PTSD, such as night terrors, flashbacks, hyper-awareness, and just prevents me making myself out as a target just by erratic behavior that shows you out as a soldier or former soldier. For many of us, it, it certainly is effective. So try it, try it, the law, says that it's wrong, but if it's your health, your life, it's you ultimately that has to make that decision. It reduces my pain, it eliminates my nausea, it helps me sleep, helps me have an appetite and to make sure I don't lose loads of weight. It's pretty much saved my life. For the world, it's because, I mean, it can help so many different symptoms. It should be the first line of preventative medicine. And we, you know, we predict that nearly everyone will be using some form of prescription cannabis in the future, in the not too distant future as well. Listening to many patients give their stories, I was caught at a personal crossroads between breaking the law to seek better health or stick to my current pharmaceuticals, which give me so many unwanted side effects. I sought out John's thoughts in the coming months to get his insight to what the future could hold for myself and the tens of thousands of cannabis patients in the UK. This really isn't taking a long time, and that's why we must bring the voice of patients front and foremost as quickly as we can because change is happening and it's happening now. The new APPG for medical cannabis on prescription 
they are looking to either suggest or even implement, if possible, a policy within the next five to six months. So there's a possibility we may have better access before Christmas this year. But if they don't have the voice of patients to explain to them the length and breadth and the different types and strains of cannabis, we fear that they're going to make some bad policy formations, bad policy uh, outcomes. And if they can listen to the voice of patients and make sure they include all of us in the decisions they're making, we'll have a much better and much more inclusive policy out the other side. Having spoken to John about the future in the UK involving cannabis, I could sense a glimmer of hope for myself and the other tens of thousands of cannabis patients in the UK. With news of cannabis' classification being possibly re-evaluated, all patients can hope for is that the panel will look at scientific evidence at how cannabis can be beneficial for all of us and not just the few.